Shalom, and welcome to Prophetic Witness. This time, Shelley. Yes. We're coming from your brother's church, our no, church in Collinsville, Oklahoma. It's so beautiful. A glorious here. church fellowship. Peaceful. Uh, where Candace and Chip Brim are pastors. And um, so for the next four weeks now, we're going to be talking about anti Semitism at its source. Now, this was sort of uh, birthed in me to do this because of what happened in Israel. The source is Satan. And what happened October 7 when Satan, it had to be Satan, that possessed those people, that broke through into the kibbutzim and into uh, the areas around the Gaza Strip and did horrendous things. But the amazing thing, shocking thing is, rather that raise world support for Israel that was demonstrated, the first thing that was demonstrated was anti-Semitism. People marching in the streets against Israel. But you know, that's a reflection of a lack of knowledge. Sure. They've been brainwashed. Yes, that's true. Now, I want to read an article here. I want Shelley to read an article that I took from um, uh, the American Jewish Committee uh, online. This is an article uh, by Holly Huffnagel. Uh, anti-Semitism as related to the conflict. So, so on October 7th, Hamas terror attack in Israel was the worst single day massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. And yet Hamas's torture and indiscriminate murder, kidnapping of innocent people has unleashed staggering anti-Semitism around the world. More than 1,200 people were slaughtered, slaughtered in Israel, including women, children, infants, and the elderly. And approximately 240 hostages are still being held in Gaza. That's at the time of this writing. The attacks and the Israeli government's response to them have sparked protests around the world. And unfortunately, too many of the voices criticizing Israel's actions to defend itself and rescue its hostages have descended into open anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in America is becoming like Europe. The American Jewish community is reeling, not just from the shock of Hamas October 7th attack, but the Jewish community is reeling also from the explosion in domestic Jew hatred it has provoked. Anti-Semitism, vandalism, harassment, intimidation, and violence have skyrocketed across the country. Anti-Semitism. Actually, that's kind of a misnomer because both the Arabs and the Jews and are, are descended from Shem, the son of uh, the son of Noah, and but but it has come to mean Jew hatred. It has come to mean hatred of Zionism, hatred of the Jews. It is an ancient and perpetual hatred. That means it's ongoing. Uh, when you go to the book of Ezekiel, it is prophetic from Ezekiel 35 on to the end. Ezekiel 35 is concerning some mountains and an area uh, that have been enemies of Israel. Ezekiel 36 says that Israel is getting their mountains back. Ezekiel 37 is the dry bones chapter. Uh, Israel's coming home. They're going to be a nation again, even though they came out of the, the horrors and graves of Europe. And then 38 and 39 is a war that's coming, and 40 on is the temple. Now, in Ezekiel 35, he's talking to this group in this area that are enemies of Israel. And I want you to notice that this is anti-Semitism God calls a, an ancient and perpetual hatred. So read, please, Ezekiel 35, 5. Okay, this is the King James Version. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and in the time that their iniquity had an end. Ezekiel 35, verse 11. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. 
Don't be concerned about it. God is the judge, and he's judging. That's one of our many books. The judgment of the nations is based on how they treat Israel. Now, here is uh, uh, the same uh, Ezekiel 35, 5 in the New American Standard. It calls it, because you have had an everlasting enmity or an everlasting hatred. This thing is ancient, and it's everlasting. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's so ancient, we, could, we recognize it in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. because it is satanic. It's Satan's hatred of God. And it is in the Bible, we see its ancient place in the Garden of Eden. But it goes back before that. It goes back, its source is Satan yes. or Satan. <laughs> it is as ancient as Satan's hatred of God. God created an archangel. He put a will in him because God doesn't make robots. He doesn't make Pinocchios. He makes creatures with a will. He created the angels. He created this beautiful, I love to go into Ezekiel and talk about how beautiful Lucifer was in his beginning. His covering, his jewels. His covering, his, his jewels. Voice. How he walked up and down between the stones. He actually had something to do with the worship. His place. And once I was reading that passage in, Jer in um, Ezekiel, and I heard the voice of God over my shoulder, and he said, my, how I loved him. So the ultimate rejection has been against God. And it was one of the archangels. And this archangel and his rejection of God is the source of anti-Semitism. You're not going to wipe out anti-Semitism until God completely destroys the devil or locks him up in the pit. Yes. We fight it. We try to stop it. We don't want to have part in it, but it is Satan. Now, Satan made, God created an archangel. He took his will. He was the first one ever to take his will and turn it against God. There's, that's why there's no redemption for him. He wasn't tempted. Iniquity was found in him. So um, I want us to read, I'm going to read to you uh, when this happened, about when it happened. We can see it in the Bible. We're going to Isaiah 14. First off, Satan, Satan, is not in hell. He's going there one day. But right now he's in this uh, area above. It says he is the God of this world. He's not the God of earth. He's the God of the world system. Mm -hmm. Prince of and the power he, of the air. And he's the prince of the powers of the air. Mm -hmm. And he's operating in this realm just above the earth here. And he moves his headquarters from time to time to different places. In the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it was over the city of Pergamum. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been other places. I have a teaching on this. But he is eventually going to hell. Now we're going to read in the Bible here about when he goes there. This is in Isaiah chapter 14. And verse, uh, we'll start with uh, verse 4. You shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Here that's going to be the whole Babylonian system. He's the king of it. Mm -hmm. He's the start of it. He's the king of this world system, the Babylonian system. It's not Babylonian, a, a city of Babylon. It's not New York City that's going to be destroyed. It is the Babylonian system. Yes. So he's the king of it. And uh, so... He is the one that, verse 6, smote the people, rule the nations. Now, this is talking about judgment. Judgment is coming to everything. God's restoring earth. Everything God started in the beginning, he's bringing to perfection. Now, in this verse right here, he has judged the earth, and the earth is so glad. It is quiet. This is verse 7. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. That's because Satan's been judged. Uh, since the fir trees are rejoicing, the cedars of Lebanon, since thou art laid down, that's L Lucifer. We're going to yes. see his name. It's going to tell us down here. No feller is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the earth. Hell, this tells us hell's beneath. Yes. And you're coming. Now we're going to see down in verse 12, Lucifer. It is to be regretted that modern translations call that light giver. Well, that's what Lucifer means, but here is his name. So this is Lucifer it's talking about. It says, when he's judged after the thousand years, he's been in a pit a thousand years. God put him in a pit. When he's judged and goes to the earth, 
goes to hell. He's yeah. going to hell now. It says, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at your coming. They've been announced to those kings down there. They are in cells. Let's say Ivan the Terrible. Let's say Hitler. Let's say the Ayatollah Khomeini. They're the chief ones of the earth. Yes. And Satan has made deals with them. You can take over the whole earth. You can do this. You can do that. And so they hear he's coming. He hasn't been here before. Right. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee. These kings, these ones that he, that he, that he deceived, they say, are you also become weak as us? You're becoming weak as us? You're becoming like us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and to the noise of thy vials the worm is spread under thee. Verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How did it happen? You promised us everything. We sold our souls to you. How did it happen? And then it gives the answer. How art thou cut down to the ground, you who did weaken the nations? That was his job. He's doing it right now. He's the one that's going to the nations. He's the one that's lying to them. He's the one that brought radical Islam, Islam itself to the earth. It's him. It's Satan. Yes. It says, how did it happen? And then it gives you the answer. For thou hast said in thine heart, and here we have five famous I wills. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne against the stars, above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. So what he did, he had a kingdom. We know Lucifer had a kingdom. It was here on the earth. But one day he decided that wasn't enough for him. He wasn't going to give worship anymore. He's going to receive it. Mm. And he wants to move his throne up. Yeah. to the throne of God. Pride. He said, I will ascend. His throne was somewhere he had to ascend. It was on earth. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. His kingdom was on earth. He's going to put his throne up there. I will sit also upon the Mount of Congregation. I'm going to put my throne up there by God's. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. Pride, yet, pride. Yet, verse 15, hmm. Thou shalt be brought down to hell. Hallelujah. To the sides of the pit. Thank you, Lord. They that look upon thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, Is this the one yeah. <laughs> that made the earth to tremble? Yeah. That did shake kingdoms? What? You became like a little worm down here. Yeah. He's puffed up. Apparently he's deflated now. He's deflated now. That's yeah. a future, of course, is going to happen. Yeah. And we know what happened. There really was a Star Wars, Shelley. Yes, there, there was. There really was a because Star the Wars. the Bible says He so. did take his troops, his angels, and he did make the attack on heaven. But what did Jesus say? Read Luke 10, 18 right here, Shelley. Yours is gone, but look at here. Okay, L Luke 10, 18. And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You know, I can just see it. I can just see God saying, don't fire till you see the whites of their yes, eyes. Yes, exactly. And angels go get them, warring angels. Woohoo! Woo and Satan fell. That's the fall of Satan. Yes. And there then you can begin Genesis 1 2. Right. When earth became chaotic, it was right. at the fall of Satan. Just for the dinosaur lovers, so that's when the dinosaurs that's had a frozen the dinosaurs. leaf in their mouth. Yeah. When the presence of God was Removed. departed from yeah. the earth. Satan so fell. this is a perpetual hatred, Shelley, and it does, he was in Eden, it's that old, yeah. but it goes back before that. Before that. Uh, the issue, at issue with Satan is the Word of God. God speaks the Word. This is God breathed. If Satan can stop the Word of God from coming to pass, he can defeat God. So when he, when he hears the plan of God, he comes against it. So in Eden, he heard the plan, Shelley, on uh, page 3, Genesis 3.15. He heard God say this, quote, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, 
and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That should have been translated, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Uh, God huh. is going to send a seed. Yes. Man has just fallen. And there's a clue here. Yes, I'm going to send a seed. Now, this seed is coming. He's my promised seed. And he's going to bruise your head. He's going to take your kingdom. Can I say one little thing? One little thing. Because I know you're... Go ahead. Women don't have seed. No. Men have seed. Mm -hmm. And here is a clue. Oh, that's exactly right, Shel. That this seed is going to come from her as, mm -hmm. as a mystery that we can read in the Gospels. How shall this be, said Mary? I know not a man. And the answer is, this is the source of the seed. The Holy Ghost shall empower you, shall cover you. Right there. It, and actually, here it is. Yeah. He actually, he actually, God revealed, God, I think God's pretty cagey, you know? Oh, I love his personality. And he says, the seed of a woman. Yeah. Well. That threw him off. From then on, he takes out after women. He takes Whenever out after he women hears a because clue. of that. Whenever he hears a clue, he takes out after it. Yes. Okay, so later on, he only can gain his information uh, by what he hears from God. Yes, exactly. So later on, he watches Abraham. And God says, I'm going to give you this land and your seed after you. The promised land. Aha, uh -huh. seed. Mm -hmm. So he comes that. after Abraham's children. Actually, he came after. Look what he did, Cain and Abel. Yeah. He, he right away, he right away. They, I don't know what all happened in that, but I can tell you right now, Satan was behind it. Yes. Satan is only on this earth because Adam let him in. Adam should not have let him into that garden. God told him, guard the garden, don't let him in. But mm -hmm. he did. He came in, and from then on then, he's after God's seed. Yes. So he was after Adam's seed. He tempted Cain to kill Abel. Exactly. They, they didn't know anything about snuff it out, yeah, whatever that they was. They didn't know anything about it. So then comes Abraham, and he mentions seed again, that word. I'm going to give you this land and all your seed after you. Aha. Uh -huh. So he takes out after Abraham's seed. Then he speaks it to Isaac, and he comes, out of, he comes after Isaac's seed. What, look what he did to Esau. And then he promises it to Jacob. He hears him say, I'm going to give it to you, Jacob, and all your seed after you. So he comes after Jacob. You ever, Shelley, you ever, those 12 sons, they became the 12 tribes of Israel's heads? You talk about, what is that? Uh, they, ha they have a word for families, you know, that are uh, ill. Oh. No, they're, they're not, you know. Oh. They have, uh, like... Well, I'll think of the word later. 20 questions. Know, 20, 20 questions, questions. Yeah. yeah. Families that are just disoriented. They're just coming to pieces. Dysfunctional. You talk about dysfunctional? You got 11 of the brothers putting the one brother in the pit. Yeah. Jo Joseph. You've got, him, you've, got, you've got Jacob, who's everything he mentions is going to come from Jacob's seed. Jacob leaves the whole bunch and goes over and lives among the Gentiles. Yes. Marries uh, and, and gets, you know, Tamar right. and all that story. That was Judah. So all of this, all of this, when he heard it's coming from the tribe of Judah, he comes after Judah. He gets Judah over there living among the Gentiles, leaving the brothers. So, but every bit of it is the ancient hatred yeah. and the fear in Lucifer of the seed. He gained that information on the 12 tribes of Israel. He's always trying to, he's always trying to stop the seed. Now we've come down through history and we see that it is the Jews. Uh, God reveals through the prophet Isaiah that they're going to come. He scatters them. First of all, he, he puts them into the land and he blesses them in the land and there, but he gives them a covenant. He cuts a covenant with them. Yes. Uh, for the land of Israel. An eternal covenant. An eternal covenant. And so Satan sees him. He sees Abraham split those animals down the back. And he sees God say, that covenant for the land is only dependent upon God. It's not dependent upon Abraham. It's God and God. Exactly. And so they're getting that land. Okay. Yeah. It's the land. Okay. So it's Abraham. It, yeah. 
Yeah, so now he's down and he's going to stop them. He wants to stop them from coming into that land. He wants to stop them from everything that has to do with it. Now, the promise from God was the first thing, I'll bless you in the land. But if you don't obey me, I'm going to scatter you throughout all the whole world. And then in the end, I'm going to bring you back. So what does he try to do? He tries to kill them while they're out there. God has said that in the millennial age, under the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, then Israel is going to rule right under them in the earth. So he sees that. It's in the Bible. He reads the Bible more than most Christians, studies it out. And so he has tried. He, he, he thinks he can stop if he, they're only like 2% of the earth's population. What will I do to stop God's word? What will I do to stop them from coming back home? I'll just kill them while they're all slaughtered out there. I'll just slaughter them all. I'll just kill them all. And so they're not that many. And so through the years, the Romans, the Spanish Inquisition, the Crusades, Tsarist Russia, the Holocaust, the Nazi Holocaust, Islam and Jihad, every one of them, he's been after God's word. He's been after God's word that they're coming home. And he did all of it under the sign of the cross. Satan attempted to, to divide God's people. There are three groups of people in the earth, the Jews, the nations, and the church. Two of them have a covenant with God. The church has a covenant with God. The Jews have a covenant with God. But he tries to divide them. And Shelley, he did a, they, he did a, they did a job on them. And I don't know if you have time for the Jacob story. Probably don't, but we'll do it another time. But God has said all of these horrors we studied. We have a 3BI, Billy Brim Bible Institute. And uh, we studied every one of these in Can detail. I share one thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just got back. I won't mention the minister's name, but it's a leadership conference for supporting Israel. I would say, what, about a thousand people there? And um, the head of the organization be told how it be was birthed in his heart to bring Jews and Christians together. He was at the wall, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, and he saw a white-haired, white beard Jewish man with his prayer book. I, and he was going like this and he was praying. And here is this Christian leader looking for the first time at this Jewish man praying. And the Holy Spirit rose up in the Christian man and said, look at him. You know nothing about your Jewish brother. You, he sh you know nothing? And he is scared. And this Jewish brother is, knows nothing about you and is scared to death of you. Now you do whatever you, is in the power, the ability I give you as your God, as your father. He won't mind you saying who it is. It's John Hagee. John Hagee. Christians to bring United them together. Israel. But I thought that in a microcosm, in a nutshell, it shows how there is this lack of knowledge between the groups of people that God has on the earth, as mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Jews, the nations, and the church. Now, surely that verse begins, give no one offense. Right. Don't tick them off. Don't, don't offend them in any way. Throwing them in the ovens, that could be offensive. Yeah. Taking them to uh, uh, the stretchers. Programs. Programs. Yeah. And taking them on, a, you know, like the stretches. During, they would put them on stretchers. Oh, horrid. We studied in 3BI. We studied. We went to every czar. Czarist Russia was horrible. Folks, there's judgment in the earth right now. The as a result of, earth, of this. As a result right. of that. And nations are being judged. Uh, they're in battles with each other. I, I, I have a, a knowledge of these things, and I'm watching, and I'm saying, oh, dear me, this is it. This is the judgment of the nations, United States of America, elect, elect, elect pro-Israel. Vote pro-Israel so that our nation can know blessing, blessing. instead of cursing. Exactly. Shelly and I will be right back. Shalom. Uh, we're offering uh, five mini books that have within them the content of much of what we're talking about. First, you have to know God's word. The land is promised to Israel. And then the judgment of the nations, all judgment of the nations is going on right now is based on how they treated Israel. Basically, these two books are scriptures. Verses from the Bible. Surely you believe God's word is infall infallible. So you see it in the word. You have to know it's true. Rightly divide the word. How to rightly divide the word. Three groups of peoples, Jews, nations, and church. And I don't have them right with me, but there's an important book, Jerusalem Above and Below, which explains how the plan of God is for Jerusalem above to come down over Jerusalem above 
below. And then we have the Shalom Word Wheel, what that word Shalom means. So these five books, $10 plus shipping. Now, we are receiving and offering every week these five weeks. If you did not see us last week, go somewhere on archives, on someplace, and you can find our first beginning. I gave my testimony, how I came to be associated with Israel, and know about these things, and how about the place we're building in Israel, Migdal, Arbel, up on the shores of the Galilee, on a hillside there uh, with the Arbel Mountains. We call it Migdal Arbel Prayer and Study Center. We have 70 rooms, big rooms there, where you can study. You can come and stay for uh, two weeks, 24 days, whatever, or, and, and, and the buses are going to come in and out. I'm going to stay there, Shelly. I'm going to let you go out with the buses. Chip can go out with a bus tour. And uh, we're going to uh, operate there. And it's a wonderful place. And so every week the offering goes there. You have to specify that it's for Migdal Bell. You can just say M.A. You can say Israel Project. But we do ask you to give. It's important. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.